Just thought we'd take a minute here to go over some of the events of this week and really next week is a very important week in uh, the Ontario landscape. Um, this week we, we saw a couple of new polls came out, public opinion surveys. Uh, on Monday, Main Street Research uh, released a poll that showed uh, PC support at 44.9%, Liberal support at 28.2%, and NDP support at 21.3%. There was also a question in that poll about favorability uh, ratings on uh, the leaders. Essentially, is your opinion of this person favorable or unfavorable? And then to do the rating, they essentially take the favorable number, subtract the unfavorable number, and come out with uh, a result. So uh, Premier Kathleen Wynne uh, came out uh, minus 35.6% on that one. Uh, Doug Ford actually came out negative as well at minus 6.5%. Uh, NDP leader Andrea Horvath came out the, the best at plus 14%. But what was interesting uh, to us was that uh, Andrea also had the highest not sure number when uh, people responded. 30.6% of respondents said, I'm not really sure about her, so I can't give you a favorable or an unfavorable uh, answer. On Tuesday, the next day, we had an, a Nanos poll came out, Nanos Research, uh, which was actually not broadly released. It was actually done for the Ontario Real Estate Association, but it's available on the uh, Nanos uh, website. And that uh, survey reported uh, PC support at 42%. Liberal support at 31%, so it's the first poll in a while that has the Liberals north of 30, and NDP support at 21%. So at about an 11 point gap there uh, between the PCs and Liberals, while the uh, uh, Main Street report had about a 16% uh, gap. Uh, on the Nanos poll, they didn't ask a favorability question, they asked who's your preferred uh, Premier? So on that one, Doug Ford uh, came in at 32%, uh, Andrea Horvath at 21% and Kathleen Wynne at 17% when people are asked who would you prefer to have be the Premier of Ontario. 10% of voters said I don't like any of them and 18% of voters said uh, they just weren't sure or didn't know. Coming up next week, it's a big week, uh, on May the 7th, which is Monday, we're going to have the first televised leaders debate. I believe it's on CP24 uh, on Monday evening. It actually is taking place prior to the formal writ period beginning, but if you are near a television and want to see these three leaders interact with each other, Monday, May 7th is your first opportunity. We are expecting that on Tuesday, May the 8th, the Ontario budget, which was tabled by Finance Minister Charles Souza on March 28th, will finally pass uh, in the legislature. The significance of that is that now, when we fully expect, the, the two opposition parties have said they will vote against the budget. You might recall that budget was chock full of a lot of big ticket items, primarily in health care and education and daycare and mental health, record investments. So the Liberals are going to put the question, they'll all vote for it, the budget will pass, and then during the campaign period you can look for the Liberals to challenge the PCs and NDP to say which uh, of those elements of that budget they will undo and of course the, the liberal message of care versus cuts will be uh, further amplified. So it'll be an interesting day to watch. Uh, we think, we expect that on the evening of May the 8th, uh, all of the parties will hold rallies as kind of campaign kickoff rallies. The liberals will probably hold an event and the leaders will attend, uh, talking about their accomplishments in the budget and kind of trying to set the tone for the, the writ period itself. I understand that uh, the PCs are going to have a rally on the evening of May the 8th, once again at the Congress Centre, right in the heartland of Ford Nation, uh, kind of north of Etobicoke. I'm not sure what the NDP are doing on uh, the evening of May the 8th, but I think you can expect that, in fact, they will have a similar event. And finally, on May the 9th will be the formal issuance of the writs, which means that the campaign period formally begins and the Elections Ontario rules will kick in. Obviously, these parties and these leaders have been campaigning for a while now, um, but for any organization out there that is planning to do third-party advertising or getting involved in a public way during the writ period, um, be aware that from May the 9th to the end of the election period, there is a spending limit, there are reporting requirements, there are things that you legally must do if you plan to get involved in that kind of public way. If you're not sure about that, get in touch with us and we can help to give you some guidance. 
So this is really the, the end of the pre-writ period. By the time we do this show next Friday, we'll be in election in the election period and the parties will be in full election mode. Um, we enjoy bringing you these uh, broadcasts. We hope you enjoy watching them. And as always, we're open to your feedback. If there are items or, or questions that you have, just let one of us know and we'll do our very best to address it. So until next Friday, again, I'm Joe Ragusa. Thank you very much for spending some time with us. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll talk to you next Friday.